Well, on my clock is 11 a.m. Uh, so what we're going to do, we're going to kick off uh, with a webinar. I know some people are going to still um, try and join, so we're going to let them in. Uh, so I would like to welcome you to our webinar, VAT for non-VAT experts. Uh, my name is Veronica. I'm going to be your moderator today, and I'm a marketing manager at Marossa. So just before we kick off with the webinar, I would like to remind you of some of the housekeeping rules. Um, we're going to record the webinar and we're going to send you the recording afterwards, including the slides that you're going to see today. If you have any questions, please use chat. And we're going to have a dedicated Q&A sessions throughout the um, seminar. So please put any questions you have in the chat and we're going to walk them through. Let me present you your presenter that I talked a little bit earlier. Alexa Garcia Amigo is our senior tax advisor and our knowledge lead. She makes sure that our internal teams, but also external audiences, are always up to date with any EU VAT changes, regulatory requirements, e-invoicing, etc. For all of you who haven't come across um, Marosa or you haven't interacted with us yet, so we help businesses grow across uh, Europe. We have 20 years of tax experience. We have multilingual support and we have an internal software, Vatify, that helps us centralize and automate all your VAT registrations, submit returns, manage communications with tax authorities, etc. But I know you guys are interested more in what we're going to cover today. So we're going to talk about the basics of VAT. We're going to talk about mechanics of VAT. Alexia is going to show you how to prepare a VAT return. I'm going to say a few words about types of supplies. So let me hand you over to Alexia, who's going to continue sharing her presentation from her screen, and he's going to, she's going to walk you through the webinar. Alexia, here you go. Thank you, Veronica. Thank you for the nice introduction and also for going through, through the agenda. OK, can you see my screen correctly? Yes, everything is correct. That's perfect. So thank you everyone for joining and welcome to, to this webinar. As already advanced by Veronica, we will, the aim of this webinar is to cover the very basics of VAT. So basically to give you an introduction on European Union VAT. So we've put together as the first slide, some bullet points on theory. However, as for the rest of the presentation, we aim to, to see more the practical side of VAT and how it impacts on the business lives. But first, we must understand what is VAT, the value added tax. Basically, it is defined as a consumption tax calculated on the value added to goods and services. So a percentage that is applied more or less to all goods and services that are, that are purchased and sold in the European Union. But VAT, of course, is not alone. So it is a recent tax. It is an important tax because it represents a, a, an important amount of the state's revenue. But in the end, it's part of, of a tax system. So we have income tax, corporate tax, eco taxes, uh, a big trend now, and of course, VAT. We say it is a consumption tax that is charged in each stage of the supply chain. It is a consumption tax. Why? Basically, because ultimately it is paid by the final customer, the end customer. You or me, when we go to a restaurant, for example, and we buy a hamburger, we are charged with VAT. So basically, when we buy things in our private lives, as opposed to the business activity. However, we see it is charged in each stage of the supply chain. So this is why we will see VAT also charged in invoices B2B. This is between business to business. Um, so every party involved in the supply chain, manufacturers, wholesalers, retailers, they will charge VAT on their sales. Next point. 
very important is that VET is neutral. This is one of the main principles of the VET tax, and it basically means that VAT is never a cost for companies. And how is it possible? Well, because companies, even though they pay VAT when they buy uh, things for their business activity, they are also able to detect VAT or to recover VAT. So sometimes we hear that a company says we have to pay VAT. But, well, this is not exactly 100% accurate. Companies are refinancing VAT, yes, but they will always be able to deduct VAT. So the tax system works in a way that VAT, VAT should be neutral for companies. And as last bullet point from this first slide, EU VAT is a common system with few exceptions. European Union VAT is an harmonized tax. We have the European Union VAT directive that sets the grounds on how VAT tax works at the EU level. Of course, member states, they have uh, some room to, to take decisions uh, on this tax, but it's always based on, on the directive. As an example, we can think on, on the VAT rates that apply in member states in the EU countries. They are different one from another, but in the end, they all must respect what is established in the VAT directive. So let's see this in from a more practical perspective. We will see here the link between the business activity, the tax authorities and how it all works with the VAT return. So activity, VAT return and tax authorities. So let's imagine we are company B and we are involved in the manufacturing of mouses, laptop mouses. For our business activity, of course, we need uh, to purchase things. For example, uh, well, we receive these blank boxes from company A, and maybe these are chips or small devices that we need to put together our mouse. OK, so we received this purchase invoice for a total value of 120 euros. This is the amount, the total amount that we will pay to our supplier. However, we can see the split. 100 euros is the net amount, the price, and 20 euros is VAT that we are paying to, a, to our supplier. Now, in our business activity, of course, we expect to have sales. In this case, we we've, uh, we issue an invoice to company C for now that we have our product finalized, we have our mouses, and we we issue this invoice for a gross amount, a total amount of 360 euros. You can see there also the split. 300 euros is the real price. 60 euros, it's what we have added up as the VAT rate, the percentage of VAT that we must always charge in our business activity. Of course, all these uh, amounts will be reported in a VAT return. The tax authorities want to know what VAT we have paid, but most importantly, what VAT we have collected from our customers. So in VAT returns, we will always have a, a sales section and also a purchase section. So in our sales section, we will differentiate the type of transactions we've made. In this case, uh, for our invoice to company C, we have a domestic sale for a net amount of 300 euros. And we need to declare that we have collected or should have collected these 60 euros of VAT. This would correspond to the output VAT of the company, the VAT that is payable to the tax authorities because we have collected it from our customers. Then in our purchase section, what is called the input VAT. Here we will declare that we also incurred in, in some expenses in our business activity. We have domestic purchases for a net amount of 100 euros, but most importantly, we want to deduct the 20 euros that we have paid to our supplier. So in the end, this is uh, the, the final VT position will compensate the output minus the input, the VT that we should pay to the tax authorities because we collected it minus the VT for which we are entitled for a deduction, which, 
purchase the, this 40 euros. So the difference between input and output will be what we need to pay to the tax authorities, this, this 40 euros. Now, how it looks the bank account of this company. Let's imagine uh, we had this initial balance of 1,000 euros. And when we pay to company A for their supplies, we noted this minus 120 euros, the, the payment we made to company A. Then we received uh, uh, the total payment for uh, our invoice to our sale to company C for 360 euros. And finally, we noted also the payment of the tax, the 40 euros. So if we leave aside the, the 1,000 euros that was our initial balance, we see that as a result of this business activity, we give we have this balance of 200 euros, which is basically the difference between the net amounts of the our sales and our, our purchases. So basically, the VAT is never part of the business profits or losses. This is just a tax that we need to collect as intermediaries. So as companies, we need to collect VAT, pay VAT to the tax authorities, collect VAT and pay VAT to the tax authorities. Alexia. Yes. If we can just stop for a second, because we got an interesting question in, in the chat sure. uh, when you were um, explaining that the VAT is actually neutral. So they asked if we have any practical example and if we can maybe repeat what we said and clarify a little bit. So maybe it would be good if we go to a previous slide. I think um, it would be much easier to kind of uh, explain the concept of yes. why VAT is neutral. I know sometimes we are all confused about that uh, sentence. Yes. Well, I must say that we will repeat this concept over the whole webinar. We will see also an extended uh, example on this. But yeah, just to go again through through the concept of neutrality. This is linked to well to the bullet points we can see here. It is a consumption tax. So in the end, VET must be paid by the final consumer, the end customer that goes to the shop. For example, I when in my private life not in my business life, in my, private, in my private life, I just buy, I don't know, makeup. I am paying for the tax. I am not able to deduct that tax. I will never recover that amount because in the end, the VAT charges the consumption. However, businesses play an important role in this tax. So this is why we say that VAT is always present in all the supply chain. So even if a company, a business, sales uh, makes a sale to another company okay the the company that is buying is not a final customer it should it's not it is not the intention of vat to charge that company that is that is making purchases however vat should be applied in all stages of the supply chain still we say vat is neutral for companies this means that it's never a cost because they are able to deduct VAT. So if I am a company and I am, uh, as, as we saw in, in this example, uh, I, I have purchased from company A and I have paid VAT, yes. So here we can say, okay, VAT is not neutral for me because I, I am paying VAT. VAT is, is having an impact on, on, on my finance as company B. But we saw that that is not the case because the tax is structured in a way that you, if you are a, 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 if you are a, a taxpayer, a, a business, you can always deduct those 20 euros of VAT or if you are not able to, to deduct them, you will always be able to get a refund from the tax authorities. So you are entitled to go to the tax authorities and ask for that money back. So I'm not sure if it's 100% clear. We will repeat this concept over and over again. But basically, this is how at high level works the concept of neutrality. And the whole tax is always the, all the principles and rules around the VET apart from this neutrality principle for companies. 
Thank you, Alexia. So uh, we can move on. And if we have okay. any other questions, we can uh, go back at our Q&A session to them. OK, that's good. Beauty neutrality, not in any case, is a concept that is always uh, controversial, let's say, because of course, if you are a company, you need to comply with a bunch of obligations related to VAT, like for example, uh, submitting VAT returns. Maybe you need to hire um, some assistance, compliance assistance, companies like Marosa. So of course, VAT will have an impact uh, on you because it's an obligation. But well, the functioning, the main functioning of the tax is conceived in this way. But now to, to move on, mechanics of VAT, we will just keep repeating going over and over again to on the same on the same concepts but we will see in this example um, a broader view we will see how vt is applied in a supply chain so let's imagine we are still company b but here we can see how it will look like the vt returns of our supplier company a remember the one who sold us these devices we will see well our vt return company b we will also see the return of company C, which was our customer. And finally, we see that in the end, the goods arrive to the end customers. Maybe this distribution company, company C, it's, it's the shop that the end customer goes in, in the street, enters in the street and buys the mouses. So we will see how particularly if you follow the arrows, we will see the track of VAT throughout the supply chain. So we see company A, uh, will submit a VAT return and will declare, we only see here the VAT amounts. Eh? So they will declare the 20 euros that uh, they have collected from us, from company B. Those 20 euros they have collected and they pay to the tax authorities. However, if you follow the arrows, as, as company B, we want to recover those 20 euros. So basically, we will just include them in our VT return as deductible amount. But of course, we also collected VAT from our customers, from company C. So here we will also need to declare the 60 euros as payable amount. So we see the difference. The result to be paid to the tax authorities is 40 euros because we will compensate our output VAT with our input VAT. This, the VAT that is payable because we collected from our customers 60 euros minus the VAT that we paid in our business activity, those 20 euros that are deductible. Okay, if we keep going with this supply chain, we see those 60 euros that company C paid to company B. They also want to recover those 60 euros because remember, VAT is neutral for companies, they want that money back. This is why in the in the VAT return of company C, you see there, they will also note the 60 euros that, that they paid as deductible amount. But of course, they also collected VAT from their customers, in this case for an amount of 200 euros. So again, they will pay for the difference between their input VAT and their output VAT, in this case, 140 euros. Now, what happens with those 200 euros? Who paid those 200 euros of VAT to company C? We see in the slide it is the end customer, the, the final customer, the one who is supposed in the first place to pay the VAT. This is why, as you can imagine, those 200 euros will never be reimbursed by the tax authorities because they were paid by the end customer. So the final customers, they don't submit VAT returns, they don't recover VAT, they don't have any deduction rights. So in this slide, finally, we've seen a bit the bullet points that from the introduction, from the introduction, those theory bullet points on VAT. We see how VAT must be charged at each stage of the supply chain, even though we are in B2B transactions. We see how VAT is neutral for companies. Only for companies, we have company A, company B, company C. All of the of them, they were able to deduct the VAT that they they paid to to their suppliers. And finally, we see how VAT is a consumption tax because the VAT 
it's finally paid by the end customer and by no one else. OK, let's look now again. Very similar example, but now we will prepare a VT return with two sample invoices. So we are still company B and we issued a sales invoice. We will see it here. So we issued an invoice to company C, in this case for an amount of 3000 euros. And we we added up, of course, we charged VET in our invoice because it's our it's 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 our duty. So we charge 630 euros of VAT, and we receive as a total from our customer 3,630 euros as as total. We also a made purchase. So we received an invoice from our supplier from company A, in this case, for an amount of 1000 euros plus 210 euros of VAT. So in total, we paid for 1210 euros. But remember the split between the net amount and what is the tax, the VAT. So how will look like our VT return? Again, we have a sales section, we have a purchase section. In our sales section, we will declare the sale, the invoice that we issued to our customer. Remember, it was for a net amount of 3000 euros. And for a VT amount, we charge 630 euros. So we collected from our customer 630 euros, or at least we should have collected that amount. Also, of course, VAT is neutral, so we want to get back the VAT that we paid for our purchase within the business activity. So we will declare that we have a purchase, a domestic purchase, for a net amount of 1000 euros, but most importantly, we want to deduct those 210 euros that we paid in concept of VAT. So again, uh, we have more payable amount than deductible. So in the end, we balance, we compensate, and the difference is 420 euros that I, as company V, I need to pay to the tax authorities. OK, any questions? Veronica, do we have any questions on the chat? Thank you, Alexia. We didn't have any questions, but we did have a comment, uh, which I'm going to read because I think it's very uh, interesting and help, helpful, again, to understand that neutrality of VAT. So the comment goes, VAT is neutral because the companies just collect the VAT from customer, then they just send this money for the government. Except when the company is acting as a customer, for example, when a company buys a car, not for selling it, but for its uses then the company pays and collect the tax for the government. Very good, very good comment indeed. Yeah, that's a, a very good clarification. Thank you, Veronica. You're welcome. I think we can continue uh, with the webinar and we're going to have another Q&A session. Perfect. OK, so we move on to the last part of the webinar, types of supplies. OK. First of all, we must say that VET is a transaction tax. So for a correct VET treatment or VET classification, you need to chop your activity into transactions. Every transaction goes in a different box in your VET return, and every transaction has a different VET treatment. So this is why it is important to really differentiate or see the different transactions that you are making from a VT perspective. Um, as a, one remark here, supplies of goods and supplies of services, they are subject to different VT rules. So there is, let's say, a Chinese wall between supplies of goods and supplies of services from a VT perspective. Different rules apply. What is a supply of goods? Well, it is defined as the transfer of the right to dispose of tangible property as an owner. 
tangible property, in general, anything that we can touch. While a supply of services is defined as whatever that is not a good. Um, in general, the difference between goods and services will be clear, but of course there are some gray areas where normally there is either a rule, maybe directive says you should consider, for example, electricity as a supply of goods. And in some other cases, well, we need to go to interpretations from tax authorities, from courts, but well, in our general daily basis, we will know when we are before a supply of goods or supply of services. So to keep it sweet and simple, I will only focus on types of supplies for goods, uh, just to, to make it simple, and we will explain briefly what they are and what is the usual VT treatment of each of them. For types of transactions uh, of services, similar or the same names apply, we will see same types of transaction. However, remember that different rules apply and the description and, and how we arrive to that conclusion will be different. So now I will be focusing on types of supplies for goods. When we are talking about supplies of goods to determine what type of transaction um, we are before, we must always follow the flow of goods very important. So in this case, you can see in the slide, we are in Belgium. So let's imagine that the goods are dispatched from warehouse A in Belgium to warehouse B of the customer also in Belgium. So there is a transfer of ownership and the goods stay within the same country. If that happens, then we are before a domestic supply of goods. Here we don't care yet if the supplier is established or non-established, if it's a, a Dutch supplier maybe, or uh, an American supplier, or the customer is also French. If the goods never leave the country, we are before a domestic supply, a domestic transaction. And what is the usual VAT treatment for these supplies? Well, normally they will be subject to VAT. This is in the invoice, we will see VAT applied there. There is an exception, which is domestic river charge. We will see this mechanism applied, especially when the supply is made by a non-established business. But well, we don't have time for uh, going deep into this concept. In, in our website, we have a, a really nice article that explains the reverse charge mechanism and the, the scenarios where we will see it apply, applicable. We will move to the next type of transaction, intra-community supply of goods. Well, if we pay attention to the flow of goods, basically this is the sale of goods that are dispatched from one member state to another member state. As for the VAT treatment, we must say that they are usually exempt. This is, a, um, this is prescribed as such in, in the VAT directive. Normally, intra-community supplies are zero rated, but it's an it's an scenario also of river charge uh, applying. The only condition to apply this zero percent of VAT is that our customer uh, has provided us with a valid VAT number. Um, in the country of arrival, a VAT number that is active for intra-community purposes or active in, in VS, VS platform. Intra-community acquisitions. Okay, this is the other side of the same transaction, basically. We have intra-community supply in country A. We have an intra-community acquisition in country B, member state B, the country of arrival. Basically, when we purchase goods from another member state. As for the VAT treatment, we already commented, normally the invoice will go at 0%, but reverse charge applies. So when reverse charge applies, customer has an obligation there, must report the VAT to the tax authorities in their VAT return. But again, this is really well explained in, in, in our web page. And very quick, last two transactions, we have export transactions, basically when the goods are dispatched from a member state to another country outside the European Union. In this case, the VAT treatment is always zero. So this is a transaction that falls outside the scope of VAT. And finally, the imports, it's when goods are coming from outside the EU and they are imported into 
a member state. In this case, VAT treatment, um, well, there is VAT applicable there, but there is no supplier who will charge VAT on the invoice. Instead, in this case, it will be the customs authorities who will collect the VAT uh, uh, from the, at the imports point. Okay, and with this, uh, I finalize here my presentation. Do you have any, any questions, Veronica, uh, from the chat? Yes, thank you, Alexia. So there's a question. Please advise if the customer did not provide us with VAT number when from one member state to another, which rate we use our country rate or a customer country VAT rate. So I think there's a little bit of a question around when you you need to which uh, VAT rate you need to apply in this yeah. specific case. It's a very good question. So basically, if you don't comply with the conditions set by the directive to apply the exemption for intra-community supplies, you need to apply the VAT rate of country of dispatch. So basically, you will treat that as a normally as a domestic supply. You will charge VAT rate of country of dispatch, and customer uh, in another member state will need to pay that VAT. Yeah, I think um, that was a good uh, good explanation. Uh, you get the thumbs up. Um, there were no more questions in the chat. Uh, however, I would like to encourage everyone who um, joined our session today, then once they receive the recording and the materials, if they have any additional questions or maybe they're not clear on certain rules, uh, to reach out to us and we would be uh, happy to share more uh, articles. For example, Alexia, you already mentioned reverse charge article. That is really good. We do have some additional country manuals, um, drop shipping article, which is quite new. Uh, so we would be happy to share that. So if there's no more questions, well, then I would like to um, tell you that you have really, really good day today, no matter what where you are. And we're going to send you all the materials uh, today. So enjoy your day and thank you for joining us.